Hello, I will be deliberating a lecture on the module named as Overview of Hindu Healing Traditions. The first section of my lecture will be exploring Hinduism by shedding light on its definition and origin in the human society. I will then move on to my second section which will center on the different Hindu spiritual practices. The third section of my lecture will be on understanding healing. This will be followed by the fourth section which deals with the healing traditions across different time periods where I will consecutively focus on prehistory, Vedic period and post Vedic period. The fifth section of my lecture will be shedding its light on healing as a nexus among body, mind, spirit. The sixth section will be dealing with healing in the Hindu traditions where Ayurveda and Yoga will be my main point of discussion. The seventh section of my lecture will deal with healing in Bhagavad Gita, the sacred text of the Hindus. Finally, I would like to conclude with the final section of my lecture that is healing in Hindu mythologies. Hinduism is the oldest living religion in the world. It is also closely associated conceptually and historically with the other Indian religions like Jainism, Buddhism and Sikhism. Hinduism has no single founder, no single scripture and no commonly agreed set of teachings. Throughout its extensive history, there have been many key figures teaching different philosophies and writing numerous holy books. For these reasons, writers often refer to Hinduism as a way of life or a family of religions rather than a single religion. The term Hindu was derived from the river or river complex of the northwest, the Sindhu. The Sindhu is a Sanskrit word used by the inhabitants of the region, the Aryans in the second millennium BC. Later migrants and invaders, the Persians in the 6th century BC, the Greeks from the 4th century BC and the Muslims from the 8th century CE used the name of this river in their own languages for the land and its people. The term Hindu itself probably does not go back before the 15th and 16th centuries when it was used by people to differentiate themselves from followers of other traditions, especially the Muslims in Kashmir and Bengal. At that time, the term may have simply indicated groups united by certain cultural practices such as cremation of the dead and styles of cuisine. The ism was added to Hindu only in the 19th century in the context of British colonialism and missionary activity. The origins of the term Hindu are thus cultural, political and geographical. Most Hindus rever a body of text as sacred scripture known as the Veda and most Hindus draw on a common system of values known as Dharma. Thus, it is the combination of mind, matter and soul that forms the basic concepts of Hinduism. The basic concepts under Hinduism are as follows. Atma is the eternal principle which guides sentiments in our life and brings it to our perception. Moksha is the release or liberation which is the ultimate aim or goal of life of all human beings. Dharma, the meaning of which differs according to the context such as religion, law, duty or righteousness. Karma implies 
that all the actions of the individuals follow with certain consequences, ultimately shaping one's destiny. Maya entails the life which is in the ignorance of the Sanatan Dharma, that is, the eternal truth. Therefore, it stresses strict adherence to universal principles through the practice of one's dharma, that is, ordained duty. The Hindu religion is composed of a variety of ritual practices that are utilized in order to foster an intimate bond between the Hindu people and their spirituality. The Hindu religion provides a wide variety of ways by which Hindus are able to access and strengthen this bond. The religious life of many Hindus is focused on devotion to God perceived as Brahman, Shiva, Vishnu or Shakti or several gods. This devotion usually takes the form of rituals and practices associated with sculptures and images of gods in home shrines. Hindus wear sectarian marks called tilaks on their foreheads as sacred symbols, which is a distinctive mark of their heritage. This leads the entire body emanate energy in the form of electromagnetic waves. An alternate path to worship in the Hindu tradition is largely practiced by Shaiva groups. This path tends to emphasize extreme self-denial called asceticism, which is often practiced in the deep forest. Those who practice asceticism are also generally practitioners of yoga or other esoteric techniques. Ascetic, yogic and similar esoteric practices are sometimes regarded as a source for attaining siddhis or occult abilities such as moksha. Thus, the Hindu spiritual practices are unique in India. It is not only based on the faith of the people but also on the scientific ground by which people acquire healing benefits. Healing is the process of the restoration of health from an unbalanced, diseased or damaged organism. With physical damage or disease suffered by an organism, healing involves the repair of living tissue, organs and the biological system as a whole and resumption of normal functioning. One of the underlying popular tenets of Hinduism is the acceptance of miracles. Most Hindus believe that direct appeal for aid from deity often results in divine intervention. The gods and goddesses are approachable and when properly besieged will change the course of events. Prayers for intercession may be made to any deity. The choice entirely depends upon the beliefs and inclinations of the devotee. Elements of nature such as trees or rocks are believed to possess powerful healing energy. At the Bedla Mataji temple just outside the city of Udaipur in Rajasthan, as many as 20,000 devotees come for healing during the 10-day Navratri festival each year. While making a wish to the goddess Durga, they crawl through a short U-shaped arch of stone and clay believed to be vibrant with sacred energy. If the individual's prayer is answered, he or she will promise to return to crawl seven more times through the arch before giving substantial offerings to the goddess. Many devotees claim that this action has resulted in miracles. People thus believe in divine healing. Cobras, the most poisonous of snakes, are revered as divine agents of healing. A home inhabited by a naga is believed to be lucky. The snake 
that is regularly prayed to and fed is said to never harm family members. The philosophies of Hinduism portray such thoughts which makes its followers heal faster from a tough situation. A few of its philosophies are what goes around comes around. A peaceful mind can be cultivated through practice. It's how you act and treat people every day that matters. It's important to question your habitual thoughts and attitudes. Self-realization is the end and aim of human life. In general, healing is believed to come to those that deserve it. Disrespectful or inappropriate behavior, for example, the seeking of self-satisfaction at the expense of one's family or friends is considered to demean the individual character and to create bad karma. Thus, healing in Hinduism can be accrued by those who have a good karma in their lives. Healing traditions can be studied in Indian context by dividing Indian culture into three different periods, prehistoric, Vedic and post-Vedic period. Focusing on the prehistoric period, we can see that excavations at different sites suggest that medical interventions such as dentistry and trepanation were practiced as early as 7000 BC in the Indian subcontinent. Organized forms of agriculture practiced by the people of Indus civilization, the importance they gave to certain medicinal plants and trees and the emphasis on hygiene and water sanitation suggest an advanced awareness of health management. Trade routes linked the Indus Valley civilization to the other parts of the subcontinent and westward to Persia, Mesopotamia and the Arabian Sea and northward to Central Asia. It is highly likely that botanical and medical commodities and knowledge were among the prized items of exchange. Recent archaeobotanical excavations give evidence for the use in the middle Gangetic region of medicinal plants since the second millennium BC that are still used by Ayurvedic physicians and folk healers. In the Vedic period, the Vedic hymns of the migrant Aryan tribes are the earliest literary source of information about healing practices in the subcontinent. These hymns provide insights into diseases prevalent during the period and their perceived causes. Most ailments, both physical and mental, were attributed to male violent spirits and cures, consisting of rituals, charms, mantras, medicines and surgical intervention. The hymns in the Atharva Veda, the last of the four Vedas, and largely composed after the Aryans were well settled in the subcontinent indicate that indigenous non-Aryan healing practices had influenced the Vedic Aryan healers. In the post-Vedic period, the Sanskrit speaking Vedic Aryan influence eventually spread eastward from the Punjab and Doha region towards the middle Gangetic plains which had its own socio-cultural and linguistic context. This was a period when diverse cultures were interacting in small kingdoms and urban centers and there were growing awareness of the influence of lifestyle and regiments on health and well-being. In such a context in the region east of the confluence of Ganga and Yamuna, Buddhism, Jainism, and other new ascetic and philosophical movements arose. Many of these movements promoted free spirit of inquiry and experimentation 
in all fields of knowledge, especially in medicine. We find early Buddhist and Jaina text in Prakrit describing the use of medicines, surgical procedures, trepanation, purges, and emetics, practices consolidated from all levels of society. The early text also recognized the importance of cultivating compassion and humanistic values as being essential for health and well-being. Buddha himself was seen as the healing guru and healing practices were part of the Buddhist monastic tradition. Medical centers privileging humanistic values that were attached to Buddhist monasteries catered to monks and laypersons. Buddhist monks disseminated Indian medical knowledge westward to Persia and Central Asia, to China and to Southeast Asia. Buddhism also took with it medical knowledge to southern parts of the subcontinent and Sri Lanka, especially during and after the reign of Ashoka the Great. Thus, by this way, the healing traditions can be traced in India. Well-being encompasses all our parts, not just the physical body. When our emotions are in turmoil or our mind is bombarded with obsessive thoughts, our health is compromised. It is important to create balance in your life by nurturing your whole person, which includes spiritual, mental, emotional and physical needs. There are various ways and means by which a person can heal his body, mind, spirit, thereby having a healthy life. One of the healing mechanisms is mudras in Hinduism. Mudras are a silent language or self-expression used in Hindu and Buddhist teachings. Mudra hand gestures or poses are often used in yoga practice, meditation and for healing purposes. Healing traditions related to one's diet and healthy digestion of the consumed food involved therapeutic treatment which invariably acts as the technique of the balance of behavior and emotions. Use of the medicinal plants also acts as vital healing strategies by which the body can be cured of the pathology it is suffering from. These traditional plants are known to be the natural antibiotics. Therefore, we can say that the alternative healing traditions strengthens the homeostatic mechanism of the human body, mind, spirit. There are different healing mechanisms in Hinduism. Each healing technique strives to create a perfect balance in the energies within the human body and to help him or her lead a normal life. Out of the various healing mechanisms, we will focus on Ayurveda and Yoga. Ayurveda can be defined as a system which uses the inherent principles of nature to help maintain health in a person by keeping the individual's body, mind and spirit in perfect equilibrium with nature. Ayurveda is a Sanskrit term made up of the words Ayus and Veda. Ayus means life and Veda means knowledge or science. The term Ayurveda thus means the knowledge of life or the science of life. According to the ancient Ayurvedic scholar Charaka, Ayu comprises the mind, body, senses and soul. Widely regarded as the oldest form of healthcare in the world, Ayurveda is an intricate medical system that originated in India thousands of years ago. The fundamentals of Ayurveda can be found in Hindu scriptures called the Vedas 
the ancient Indian book of wisdom. The aim of Ayurveda is to prevent illness, heal the sick and preserve life. This can be summed up as follows. To protect health and prolong life. To eliminate diseases and dysfunctions of the body. Ayurveda is based on the premise that the universe is made up of five elements. Air, fire, water, earth and ether. These elements are represented in humans by three doshas or energies, vata, pitta and kapha. When any of the doshas accumulate in the body beyond the desirable limit, the body loses its balance. Every individual has a distinct balance and our health and well-being depend on getting a right balance of the three doshas, that is three doshas. Ayurveda suggests specific lifestyle and nutritional guidelines to help individuals reduce the excess dosha. A healthy person as defined in Sutsrutam Samhita, one of the primary works on Ayurveda is one whose doshas are in balance, appetite is good, all tissues of the body and all natural urges are functioning properly and whose mind, body and spirit are cheerful. The three doshas or bioenergies found in our body are Vata pertains to air and ether elements. These energy is generally seen as the force which directs nerve, impulses, circulation, respiration and elimination. Kapha pertains to water and earth elements. Kapha is responsible for growth and protection. The mucosal lining of the stomach and the cerebral spinal fluid that protects the brain and spinal column are examples of Kapha. Pitta pertains to fire and water elements. This dosha governs metabolism, that is, the transformation of foods into nutrients. Pitta is also responsible for metabolism in the organ and tissue systems. Therefore, Ayurveda has a detailed list of all medicinal herbs, which creates a balance in all the energies in the human body, so that a person can live a healthy life. Focusing on yoga, we must know the lines from Bhagavad Gita which is the holy book of the Hindus. That is, yoga is the practice of tolerating the consequences of being yourself. Derived from the Sanskrit word huge, yoga means union of the individual consciousness or soul with the universal consciousness or spirit. Yoga is a 5000 year old Indian body of knowledge. Though Many think of yoga only as a physical exercise where people twist, turn, stretch and breathe in the most complex ways. These are actually only the most superficial aspect of this profound science of unfolding the infinite potentials of the human mind and soul. The science of yoga imbibe itself the complete essence of the way of life including Gyan Yoga of philosophy, Bhakti Yoga or path or devotional bliss, Karma Yoga or path of blissful actions and Raja Yoga or path of mind control. Raja Yoga is further divided into eight paths. At the heart of the Raja Yoga system, balancing and unifying these various approaches is the practice of Yoga Asana. There are different types of yoga. Hatha Yoga Hatha had its origin in India in the 15th century. The syllable Ha denotes the pranic force governing the physical body and Ta denotes the Chitta that is mental force thus making Hatha Yoga a catalyst to an awakening of the two energies 
that govern our lives. It is slow paced, gentle and focused on breathing and meditation. It relieves stress and improves breathing along with physical exercise. Raj Yoga It is an inclusive of all yogas. It emphasizes on meditation and self-realization as well as the evolution of the consciousness. Tantra Yoga It aims at expanding consciousness. It promotes a one-pointedness and centeredness that helps us to free the consciousness from any kind of limitations. Therefore, there are different types of yoga which strives to heal the people out of their pathology. Yoga many a times is the key to long and healthy life of an individual. Before delving deep into the topic, let us first see a small Sanskrit verse on healing from Bhagavad Gita. To translate the quotation in English, we can see that but it is who am the ritual, I the sacrifice, the offering to the ancestors, the healing herb, the transcendental chant, I am the butter and the fire and the offering. The main purport of this quotation is that, according to the Vedas, Lord Krishna is considered to be omnipotent in nature. It is he who carries out the activities on the earth. He regulates our behavior and thus all our offering and emotion must be towards him in order to wish for anyone's quick healing. Thus. By these ways, there are many concepts which are laid down in the Gita. All these concepts acts as a source of healing to all its readers during their period of crisis. In Hinduism, the Ashwins are inseparable twin gods of medicine and healing who occupy an important place in Hindu pantheon whose origin is shrouded in myth, mystery and symbolism. They are mentioned in the Vedic hymns and the Upanishads. They are extolled as possessors of horses, harbingers of the goddesses of dawn, Usha and knowers of the secrets of plant life. A number of hymns are addressed to them because of their healing and curative powers. In the epic Mahabharata, they were responsible for the birth of Nakula and Sahadeva. The story in Ramayana goes as a battle ensues between Ravana's demon army and Rama's animal army. Lakshman is so badly wounded in the battle, it seems that he will die before sunrise. In some versions of the story, many monkeys and bears are wounded too. The monkeys and bears decide that Hanuman must slip to Himalayas and bring back the healing herb from the medicine mountain to save Lakshman's life. So Hanuman leaps over the ocean and across the whole of India to the Himalayas. When he arrives at first, he can't find the medicine mountain. When he finds it at last, it is covered with herbs and he doesn't know which is the magic healing herb. So Hanuman wraps his arms round the whole mountain, pulls it out the ground, lifts it up onto the palm of his hand and flies with it back to Lanka. The healing herb is picked and given to Lakshman. Lakshman is healed and filled with energy. In the same way in Mahabharata, healing words are uttered by Lord Krishna which serve to heal the readers and help them to face all odds in their lives with courage. Therefore, the concept of healing is imbibed within the Hindu tradition.
Therefore, one can rightly say that Hinduism indeed lays its concentration on how to heal the person out of their pathologies. Researchers are going on in the sphere on how spiritual healing can be an alternative source of healing. One can find the core of the ancient healing practices in the Hindu culture and tradition, thus making it one of the most scientific-oriented religions in the world. Thank you.